that some of that would have to depend on how many uh, connections we have. Right. Well, I, I can tell you that the biggest cost of that is actually uh, when they put the line to the building, uh, when, when, then they um, charge us on our bill just for the connections to it. Um, and they are putting the, the bet that, so they're not charging us for what they're running to the main building. What they'll charge us for is what's coming from the, uh, just like you would at your house or an apartment building or anything else, city hall, uh, what comes from the main hub to the phones. So we don't know what the, and we're not being, we're not being charged for that anyway. So it really doesn't concern us what's going to the building. What's coming from that line is going to be the latest and best um, digital service that they have available. And I think at and is running it. Um, and while I'm not real crazy about at and customer service and reliability on the, the actual phone handset, the, the main uh, internet that goes to the building, they're doing that all over town anyway, actually. I mean, I don't think you even have an option anymore um, because they're trying to upgrade all of the internet around here and make, basically make the internet highway bigger. So until they run that line and we, we get an estimate, and they can't do an estimate until they've run the line to the building. And Chief Smith, correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I think that's the case. Yeah, you correct. It'll be a lot better than what we have now. I know that. But Miss Davis, as soon as I can get, a, you know, a good number for you, I get it to you. Okay. Any other questions on the lease agreement? Um, the nine one one system was addressed in the lease. Uh, basically, they just they agreed. I think uh, Andre is telling me that, or he just said, repeated it, that y'all agreed that 911 is not a, a fixture, uh, but it was spelled out in there anyway, just to, um, in response to the concerns from the council. So, I know we've, well, I know Andre has successfully addressed the concerns that were expressed last week. Right. Well, we didn't agree that it was, it wasn't a fixture, but we agreed is that we've put it in there. Uh, because I think anything that you bolt down to the building is, is, is technically a fish fixture. I know that's that's a very cautious reading of a fixture, but I did want to make sure that we had it spelled out because 911 system is expensive, and we want to be clear because it's, I also attached, if you all looked at the ordinance, the layout, and you look at it, it's a color layout, and the portion that, that we're leasing is red, but you also have access to the to to the uh, the lobby and, and the meeting rooms that's right adjacent to us, uh, so you can see the layout of it. Uh, because the way the previous is read, it basically just read four walls. Even though that wasn't part of that wasn't the agreement, they were going to build it out. But I wanted to make sure that that was expressly uh, attached to it. So, so in other words, we made it clear that nine one one's not going to be a part of the agreement, and. Uh, Correct. I think that's the part. You know, at, at this point, if we approve it, it's in the judge's lap and the quorum courts, and they can do what they want. Is that right, Andre? That's correct. And the other thing also, just out of abundance of caution, if you look at the inspection level, the mayor or, or you all, you all can inspect it before we ever move in to make sure everything is how you want it before you move in. <laughs> I added that language. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay. All right. So the question before the council is, um, hold on a second. The question before the council is, on the council again, there you are, um, is the lease agreement on the justice complex that we started talking about last week, or we're talking about it for months, but this is in black and white. So any, if no other questions or comments at this point, is there a motion to adopt the lease agreement with- uh, Mr. Mayor, 
Joe St. Columbia. Mr. But yes, Mr. Mr. St. Columbia, you're recognized. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we accept the uh, agreement of the uh, local justice complex as uh, presented by the city attorney and uh, we discussed tonight. Okay. That's my motion. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor that we adopt the uh, lease agreement that's before you tonight as uh, as drafted by uh, Mr. Valley. Is there a second? Okay, let me make sure everybody's mic. This is a little bit difficult with a mic situation. So is there a second to Mr. St. Columbia's motion to adopt the lease agreement? Second. That's, I think that was Monica. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, whoever's calling the roll, call the roll. <laughs> hey, Columbia. There we go. Yes. Franklin. Yes. Davis. Davis. She said yes. I've read a list in So again, Susan. Davis? Yes. Ford? Yes. Ethelie? Yes. Five yes, one absent. It was so painful. <laughs> Notes and passes, thank you very much. We, uh, we now have that in uh, on the other side of the street and uh, we'll let them uh, look at it and decide what to do with it at this point. So thank you all very much on that. All right, the next item on the agenda, does anybody have the agenda in front of them? Yeah. Yeah, the ordinance, the base pay. Base pay ordinance, okay. Um, all right, this is, I think, the same thing that we brought up last weekend, last week. Uh, if uh, we haven't made any changes that I'm aware of, have we? Anybody? No. 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 Uh, what we had at the time was um, it was on third and final reading. Is that right? And then we didn't have a second on the final reading. It was on third reading. Then we passed, and then we went to final uh, final reading and and, and vote. And uh, I think it was Mr. Franklin dropped his phone or something and we didn't have a second. So uh, I think we've already discussed it. Nothing's changed, I don't believe. Well, nothing's changed and it's since last week. So before we do that, though, any conversation, any questions or comments about the base pay ordinance? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, Mr. Adderley. I, I have great hesitation not knowing what our income is going to be in the next few months. I, I, I had hesitation. I think the um, the way to pay for this, as I understood it, was to control overtime. Correct. Uh, but in light of what has happened in the last few weeks and what seems to be another loss of revenue that's going to come, I just think our future is so unpredictable. Yeah, uh, Ms. Ethel, Ms. Ethel I, I, I agree. I think what I had suggested to uh, Chief Smith and the mayor earlier in our discussion, you guys did approve the new best plan, particularly for the police officers in particular. Uh, mm -hmm. I just simply recommended that since you guys had already uh, passed the budget with mm -hmm. the police and salaries in it, right. that you just that they just not exceed budget that was already passed. And so that may mean even though you have 30 police officers in the base pay ordinance, uh, the budget wouldn't allow you to have 30 officers at that new increase rate. And so the limit that they would have would be that they own us, but they would still have to remain within the budget that the council had already passed. So that was just a, a suggestion that I had. Yes, sir. And I mean, it, it, 
It makes well, sense. I mean, it, it, makes, I agree. it makes sense on with dollars and cents, but we never stay within the budget. I mean, in, in certain items. So, well, let me let me just say, uh, you know, if last year, you know, Andre, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Derek, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, we were about six hundred thousand dollars less than what we budgeted. Is what we actually ended up with. Is that right? Somewhere overall, in that yeah, I think that was police sign. Yeah, that was over the so, overall budget. Yeah. I'm not I mean, sure I, I have to sign up right in front of me. I could probably pull them up, but well, I uh, I can just about actually. I think I I might be able to tell you here in a minute, but I've got yeah. that pretty pretty close. Actually, I can I can tell you. Um, we uh, yeah. our total budget. Last year was seven point eight million or seven point nine million, and we actually spent seven point three million. Mm -hmm. So we've we've actually um, not we've not only balanced the budget, but we spent way less than the budget. And that's by the way, that's I know Derek. I hope that's on the agenda. We need to pass the cleanup budget so that we don't get knocked on it uh, in the audit uh, that we do. And all that does is it, it just corrects a couple of categories. But overall, we did quite well financially last year in terms of restraining on spending. The goal this year, uh, as, as we've talked about many times, is to do these raises out of the overtime. Um, and we've talked a lot, a lot of different options. It, 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 it appears and just after lots of conversations that the main um, – the main question is, can we control overtime? And some of the ideas that Mr. Everly and others came up with about having a, a gatekeeper um, and a few other things to help us monitor that on a, on a biweekly, monthly basis, I think will make up for what we need in the police and fire department. Has this gatekeeper been put into uh, place yet or has this occurred? Or if not, when will it uh, start? It, it has occurred at the police department, and really, Roderick is our, our gatekeeper over the fire department, um, and I'm waiting on a report. We already should have less overtime in the fire department for the same reason. Uh, what they need in the fire department is the ability to promote and have um, a corresponding pay difference that, that, you know, that matters. That's what the fire chief is asking for. Uh, not the number of positions. He's good there. Uh, he just needs, if you get promoted up a rank and you have more responsibility, he wants to have, you know, more uh, competitive pay at that rank. And he's, you know, and he and the police chief both lose people all the time that we invest. I mean, you have to look at how much we invest in these folks. We pay for their academy. Um, we pay for their uniforms. We pay for, not to mention the time we put in training them and getting them experience and all of that only to lose them to uh to other other places and and so his his issue is mostly retention and the chief the police chief chief smith's issue is uh recruitment and retention uh so he's got the same issue when will you but have can, this report as it relates to overtime well, here's the problem. It's, as we've talked about several times, this is a tail wagging the dog. It's a chicken and egg. If you're going to go with fewer police officers, they're going to be working more hours. So you're not going to have... I was asking, I guess my question relates to the gatekeeper. And you said you were waiting a report from them. And my follow-up well, question was, when will you have this report? Well, the proposal here is to report to y'all monthly on what the difference is when we make this change. Okay, so you do have the gatekeeper, you have that in place, but nothing has, uh, they have not started tracking this yet. Is that what you're saying? Well, I wouldn't say they haven't started tracking it in the fire department, I think they have, but I don't have a report ready for you as far as that goes. But the idea behind this is the report should be showing that we're paying for the raises out of overtime. Okay, you said it should be, okay. One of the reasons we have the overtime is because we don't have the the people and the promotions. So, like I said, it's a tail wagging the dog thing. So, 
uh, we had we talked about several different ideas, revenue stabilization uh, idea I had, and uh, you know it, it comes down. And I think Don is right. It comes down to uh, just day to day management, week to week, payroll to payroll. Um, but it's also and there's several reasons for overtime. Uh, there's not just one. There's there are lots of reasons, and this actually this this crisis right here is a very good example of it. Um, when we have all of a sudden something we couldn't have prepared for, um, we're going to be pay, paying people time and a half to do jobs that we would be paying people to do time, regular time. But we're paying more for fewer people. And what the chief is asking for, and both chiefs, uh, are more people and better pay so we can retain them. And, and that should make up the difference in overtime. We'll still have overtime but we'll be able to stay within our budget at over time instead of going outside it, which they've been doing for years and years. So anyway, I'll stop talking. Any other, any other questions? Do we have a, um, do we have a pool of applicants? Um, I mean, do we have anybody, do, do we have a pool of people out there that we're going to select from that? Uh, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is, do we have people who want to be police officers? Um, that's a good question because that's a, that's a big challenge right now, but I'll let Chief Smith answer it. Chief. We have a pool of individuals who want to come here. The main thing is recruiting and retention, Recru recruiting qualified individuals who would want to come to Helena, West Helena, and to be the police with no experiences, but also retain by having promotional exam to retain individuals that we have in testing. We do have a pool of individuals who are from Clarksdale, Jonesboro. We got some people who won't come back to the police department, but the concern is that if they're gonna put their life on the line, at least they can be compensated for the, uh, for the job that they're gonna be uh, placed in front of them. And that's the main thing is recruiting and retention, recruiting qualified individuals and having community to stay and retaining the ones that we have through leadership positions and professional development within the police department. So I think basically what you're saying is we have some, um, we got some, we got some transfers on the radar, but no, no new freshmen. Correct. That's, that's a sports analogy. There. <laughs> yes, sir. I okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I mean, well, Mr. Anthony, my concern is, yes, is I, I, you know, I'm over here and I see parents every two weeks, and mm. uh, I don't want to get in a situation where, uh, you know, we can't get a handle on things, trying to get a handle on things, and uh, stretching ourselves to the point where we're continuously hand to mouth. Uh, one of the problems that I do see with it is like, you said is that the, the salary goes up. We only have a limited amount of resources. Right. Uh, salary goes up higher as you want, and so you're still going to have some overtime. And overtime, we you know we don't know how to what degree it's going to go up or down, but you still won't be won't be able to be fully staffed. And so you have a situation where we can increase the salaries. You can hire more people. You, I mean, you attract more people, but you can't hire as many. So you're not full of staff. Or you can leave the, the salary the same, and people don't want to be police officers, and then you're still understaffed. So I, I don't know which way is the best way to be. You're going to be understaffed. So I don't know which way is the best way to be understaffed. I mean, I mean, I... Mr. Ethel, my biggest thing is to is trying to promote individuals within the department. The department has not had a promotion in in the last past 10 years. We want to promote and reward our officers who are already here. However, we don't want to bring in a lot of officers at one time. I understand I would love to be a staff, but I know because of the resources and because of the monies that we're talking about, it's not, it's going to, it's going to be feasible for us to max out at 30 people. What I want to do is get the individuals we have for both them but attract 
a certain number of individuals to come here in the phases. I'm not talking about how to hire 20 police officers. We can't do that. We want to try to take care of our people here, allow them to develop in their they profession, but also have a number out there where people want to come here to help the West Hudson, not only just work, but live as well. So that's pretty much that's what we're looking at. Derek, with the anticipation of a uh, loss of revenue and with some uh, continual overtime, because we don't know what uh, is going to come down the line, we can handle all of this? Uh, we, like, like I said, if you stay within the budget, and that's, what, that's one of the key uh, things, is that the budget you guys have already passed, you have to, you have to stay within that that budget. Now, I've read some studies. I've got some studies from the Municipal League and uh, I think the Walton School of Business and some, um, um, I forgot what the other one was. So I read a couple of studies. And they suggest a 5% decrease in consumer uh, demand. And and so I'm, I'm kind of, worst case scenarios, you may have a 5% five five in uh, decrease, and that's what they're predicting um, for revenues. But our sales tax revenue, in my personal, okay, they say 5%, which we'll could be as much as $200,000. But in my personal opinion, when I looked at the our particular tax base, and our, our tax base is driven mostly by Walmarts and the grocery stores. And so those sectors of consumer demand are predicted to increase. So they don't see a, a, a decrease in going to the Walmarts and the general stores and the grocery stores. So it's hard to say. So a, a, based upon our particular demographics, we may not see much change. However, uh, we have a couple of studies that show that we may have at least a 5% decrease. So I, I use at least a 5% decrease in sales tax revenue as a, a worst case scenario. But in my personal opinion, and like I said, my personal opinion, I'm not sure if it'll be that much because most of our upon what they call general merchandise stores, which are the Walmarts and the uh, uh, dollar stores. We don't have a lot of car lots and things like that where we have a lot of purchases and uh, a lot of uh, uh, grocery stores. That's, that's where our um, sales tax revenue is primarily generated from. I mean, right now, if you, you know, it's not a really a good thing when it comes to this virus, but when it comes to sales tax revenue, I, Derek, I don't know about you, but I kind of think we'll have a bump uh, for March because of so much hoarding. Um, and it, it's, it's stimulated a lot of, uh, not just here, but from or surrounding areas. Um, I don't know, we might not be. I've talked to the league, the league about it, and nobody seems to, to – the truth is nobody really seems to know uh, where – it depends on your big sources of income, just like Derek said. I think um, we won't know until probably June. Right. Um, um, so I, I think it's a good point. But the other thing is, and I kind of want to go back to – something somebody said when it comes to overtime for emergency services we're getting ready to um we are now already um in a good example of why this should have been passed already i think because we don't have the force we need uh and we're getting inundated with uh, new requirements under all the governor's orders to enforce these laws uh and directives that he's sent out to his orders and the health department's orders. Uh, it's really overwhelming already. Uh, so we can pay people time and a half or we can people pay people time. I mean, from a business perspective, it's really simple. You can either pay them uh, for time or you can pay them time and a half, but you're gonna pay it. Uh, so I suspect we will pay more with less and you need people on the ground when it comes to the police force. The same is true with the fire department. That's the reason we needed 30 people because the state won't give you that rating that you want ISO rating because they know you need at least that many people in a town our size 
to ad adequately fight fires. It's the same with the police, except you don't have these requirements like the fire department does. Um, but it's the same situation. You have a large geographic area to cover. Um, and when you don't have enough people to cover it, uh, even if you pay them time and a half and they work themselves to death, uh, you're spending more money and arguably less coverage. We have fewer people to send out. Uh, they're tired. Uh, they may want to work. They may want to make the money, but that doesn't mean they're not tired. Um, so, and the only way, and I think going back to the original thing, the only way to control it over time, it's true, it's, it's going to be a month to month reckoning. Uh, are we really doing this? Are we showing that discipline? I don't think we're going to know that till we try it. And that's why I wanted to include you know, at least bi biweekly or monthly reports to the council so that you can see what we're doing on that. Um, I think the whole thing rests on that. And, and to go back to Don's first point about money, we can't afford it. I'm going to tell you right now, we can't afford it if we don't control over time. And I also think we're going to have to be more conservative on filling open positions um, right now that are not emergency services or essential personnel. And so those are all management decisions. Uh, but I think based on the first year, we did pretty well considering. And I think we'll get through this also. And some of the stimulus packages, by the way, um, as long as we can document that these expenses were associated or affiliated with this crisis and that we had a state of emergency, which we do, um, then we're eligible to get compensated later for that. So that's good news. Um, Mr. Uh, Mayor, if I may. Yeah, Andre. Uh, yeah, Andre Valley for the record. One of the things that I think the chief made was a very salient point. Uh, when you're looking at bringing new people in, part of our problem right now is you haven't had promotions. My concern as city attorney is we the lawsuits that we keep getting with people suing, they say, I've been promised this position, promised that position. People applying said, no, I'm supposed to come in at this rank. I think you alleviate that if we if you go ahead and do the promotions first, so that uh, when people come in, they're coming in uh, and done after this example as as freshmen, they're coming in as at, at the lower at the lower uh, pay scale unless it gets approved by the council. Because you're gonna have some people that that would apply uh, per se that say, hey, I got all these years of experience, I should have to come in at, at a patrolman first class, I should be able to come in at some other place. Uh, and that that may be on a case by case basis, but I think you have to move the the people who are in the lower positions out of the way to give them their promotions so that you can hire the the people at the lower end. I, I think that's a practical issue that hadn't been addressed. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Miss Ford, what I, I was going to ask you, I mean, I was going to uh, another response to your your question was that. Um, the surplus that was projected for the budget uh, would fall in line with what I had projected as a loss. And so if that worst case scenario happened, well, I'm not going to see worst case, the, the, the 5% is what I had predicted. So if we did experience a 5% decrease in sales tax revenue, then that would eat up, eat, eat away the, the surplus that I had uh, budgeted. So we would kind of break even. So right now I had budgeted a, a, a hundred, and eighty thousand dollars. I think it'll probably be more than that because we did pay when I asked for that uh, budget uh, uh, amendment to reapportion some, uh, reappropriate some money. We actually paid the municipal league the eighty thousand dollars for the twenty premium in nineteen in twenty nineteen, and so that won't count against our twenty twenty budget because it's already paid, and so. That's going to add about eighty thousand dollars to the budget right now. So we're looking at about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars surplus if everything went according to the budget. And I think uh, using that five percent decrease in consumer demand, I think that was a decrease in my um, um, sales tax revenue of about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if we did experience what the studies projected, then we would probably break even. Everything else being the same. Now you you know we we you, you really don't know, but just Based on the best guess and using those studies, we would break even. Okay, thank and so you. So we could handle it as long as we stay within 
and like I said, it's key, and, and Mr. Ethley would agree with me, the key thing is to stand within the budget. Well, I, I, I would disagree on one point. What's that? The budget is no longer the budget. I mean, nationwide, people are going home. No. Oh. People are going home and spending is going to be down. So our projections are based on the numbers, previous year's numbers that we had. The projections don't encompass what's about to happen. And so what, what I would say in, in response to Ms. Ford's question is, really, we don't know. It's, it's, a, it's, it's honestly a guess in the dark. Will we have enough revenue to cover increased spending of any kind? Or will we fall short? And so what I would tell everybody at, at, at the table or wherever you are at this point in time is, uh, if we do it, you should be ready to decide around August or September how you're going to make up for it. And that always means who, who, who will you send home if this doesn't work out? And so if you're not considering what remedial measures you might need to take, then don't, don't step out on this, on this bridge because uh, it, it might fall down. Um, because we have no idea where the economy is going. We're looking at a recession and maybe even depression at this point with, you know, millions and millions of people unemployed. Spending will not be the same, even if it's up right now because people are running out grabbing stuff that they absolutely need. If people start losing jobs, our, our tax revenue is going to go down no matter what. You won't spend what you don't have. And, and that's going to impact us. So, um, you know, I, I want everybody, I want us to be able to pay everybody. I want us to be able to pay everybody well. But I've always said this, know what you're going to do if this turns bad. Know what you're going to do. And I know because I've been here for some years, we have people at the table who will not want to send anybody home under any circumstance. But those are the, the decisions that you uh, uh, ran to, uh, these, into these positions for. So if we do it, you got to know who you're sending home if this goes bad. Now, if it stays up, if, if, if your prediction is correct, if we can just downgrade our revenue by, what are you saying, 5%? Yeah, I mean, that's what the studies, yeah, that, I'm just going, and like I said, I'm just going by the studies. No one really knows, and they say that in the studies. No one really knows, so you're, you're correct. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, no, nobody knows. No, yeah. Nobody knows. It's, it's just a guess. I understand. So, know, know what you're buying is all I'm saying. No, and, and I agree with you. No one knows, and if 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 if, 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 if the revenue decreases below that, you have to be ready to make some hard decisions. Right. I agree with it, and I think that's true in any case um, for the whole city. But I, I do think the first responders would be the last ones mm -hmm. to go. Um, and the other thing is, we're spending the money on the first responders anyway. So the I think the issue would be more for other city workers than first responders. And my whole thing about this specific issue all along, and I don't think that changes anything. In fact, it might even be more important now with what we're facing is that we are spending the money anyway. Um, so we're, we're spending it anyway. We're, we're obligating it anyway. Uh, we're paying it anyway. And the question is how best to spend what we're already spending not how to spend money we're not we don't have or money we're not going to have it's how to spend the money we're already spending that's the only question here how do we spend what we're already spending is it better to spend time and a half and a few handful of employees or is it better to spend uh on full-time employees and not spend 10 and a half and have enough people um to to do the adequate coverage for the city in a crisis like this and, and in any time so you know i, I do agree with uh, mr Adley about the whole picture, about the unknowing of it. It's just that we're spending it anyway uh, right now. So how do we best spend what we're already spending? And if really, if it were my business, I could tell you, we would spend less money and have more people. Uh, but it's not a business, it's not my business. Mm -hmm. It's something that, that we are, it's the public's business. So, um, but, but I can tell you, if we did this correctly, we could have the promotions and the people and the better coverage and spend less, actually spend less because we're spending time and a half. Remember time and a half, that's a half as much more. And um, I think we could do better. So that would be my only rebuttal to that as far as this particular thing before you tonight. 
And when we lose firemen, you know, we have to hire them, we have to retrain them, we have to pay for them to go to Camden, we have to go through the same thing every time, only to lose them to another uh, competitor uh, city. And so I, I would plead for you to consider voting for this. But anyway, enough, enough for me. Any other comments? I have a question. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, stimulus money. Ha have we had anybody to look at the CARES Act to see, is there any money in there for first responders? Because my gut tells me they put something in there for uh, first responders. Uh, but do we absolutely know or where yeah. are we on that? Good question. Um, I had a meeting with, I've had a couple of meetings with the Municipal League and the answer to that is, the short answer is yes. Uh, the longer answer is a lot of that's being funneled through the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. On the law enforcement side, uh, what they're telling us, because it takes a while to get the money, is be prepared to spend it now and wait for your check and document everything that you're spending that's related to this crisis, because that's how they're going to end up uh, paying you, whether it's first responders or FEMA or anything else. So, but the answer is yes, first responders are in that stimulus package. I mean, that, that provides a, a, an alternative method in, in case something, in case a revenue drops, it gives That's us right. a, another source of finance and um, pay increases, so. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Now, now, I can't be, I, let, me, let me emphasize, they told us to document what you're doing. They're not gonna pay us up. They're not gonna pay us. They're gonna pay us back for what we're doing now. So that's the way we were told to look at it. Now, there might be some exceptions to that, but as a general rule, the stimulus package is going to pay us back for what we can document is related to this crisis. So. Okay, other comments? Sorry. Any questions? Okay, we spent enough time on this probably. Yeah, my battery's going low, so I know we did. Um, okay, so the question on the floor is uh, the uh, passage. I think now, Sandy, we did. Do we have to do? Uh, we did the third reading last week, so this is for final passage. No, we need no, to start I, over. We have to start over. Okay, so the yeah. motion is for third and final for third reading, put place it on third reading. Yes, it's ordinance number five. Ordinance number five. Yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor Joe. Mr. Mayor Joe St. Columbia. Look at this. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor Joe St. Columbia, I make a motion uh, that we put this on the third and final reading. Okay, so um Mr. St. Columbia, excuse me. Do you, sus do you move yeah, to yeah. suspend the rules and read the title on as well? Absolutely, yes, sir. I sure do. Hello? Hello, yes. Yes. The mayor disappeared. Oh, we did. Oh. Yeah, I think we're having trouble with this. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's been everything. Mr. Valley, do you want to ask for a second? <laughs> I'll go ask Mr. Etheliff. He would ask his pro tip. Is there uh, anyone that has a second? The, the most on the floor of uh, Mr. St. Columbia is to to suspend the rules, place on third and final reading, reading the title on that for the base pay ordinance. Is there a second to that motion? I'll um I'll second that. Okay. Is there any further discussion on that? Yes, yes, yes. I have a question. Okay. 
we have two proposed ordinances. One is increase for fire and police, and one was increase for police. Uh, this is ordinance number five, but which one is there? I, Ms. St. Columbia, which motion would you... Uh, which ordinance? Which ordinance were you trying to do? The one that police and fire or just the police? Let's Let's go them both. Please. Okay. What's that? Think, that's... Mr. Franklin is trying to ask a question. I think his mic is muted. Yeah, the system keeps muting me from time to time. I don't know how the system is doing it or why. I don't either. It's not me. And you help. <laughs> not me. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, I've been in by some hell and hell and like, I'm not doing it. Man. I'm not doing it. I'm telling you, I'm not doing it. <laughs> hey, somebody wants us to be quiet. Some third person is, is, is back there working. It. What's frankly, your question, can, you, can we hear you? Hang on, let me try this right here. No, his, his mic is muted. Yeah, I'm... I'm can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah we can. Yes. I've been having questions for the longest. Uh, I was trying to see where, where are we on overtime? How much money have we spent so far on overtime? And uh, my other question is uh, with the rate of pay, with the rate of pay, you know, we have two officers to leave to come back. Of making more than the officers that are there right now. So how can we assure that will happen again? Or can we make sure we bring all the officers up to like maybe a, a, the same salary? And uh, have we entered into a contract with Walmart? Um, with Frank, I'm going to answer one of your questions, Andre Valley City Attorney. One of the questions, one of the things is what I suggested uh, I agree with what the chief said earlier. I think that one of the things that I would feel comfortable with is if we can find out to do it, uh, Mr. Turner and Ms. Ramsey, is that we do the promotions first and then hire the other people because uh, these lawsuits that we keep getting, they keep people saying, I'm being treated different, being treated different, and people walking across, walking in the street to a higher position wouldn't be good. And I'm not saying that's happening. I'm saying that, that people try to argue that they're being looked over and people coming in and getting positions. I don't know that this happened, uh, but I think that uh, the chief raised a very good point that the process hasn't been done in, in a, quite a while. And if you're gonna, you need to promote people so those, the vacancies will all be at the bottom. And whoever you're hiring will only be coming in at the bottom and they'd have to be hired according to base pay. Did y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. Cause everybody face froze when I when I was talking. <laughs> I, I didn't know if, if I was if I was being heard. Ms. Turner, what are your thoughts? Oh, what? What I just said, promotions, and then the, uh, I, 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 that's what I want to do. Promotions. Like I said, my my uh, advice from the beginning was stay within the budget. Yeah, but that's that's in the budget. Is that correct? Yeah, the budget is the budget is how whatever you can fit in there is what I'm saying. The salary you have salaries and wages and overtime. What they're gonna look at is did you go over that? It doesn't matter if you had ten officers and four saying, cabins and as long as you but, don't go over budget, you're you're fine. But what I'm saying is as a practical and pragmatic thing, we have the base pay that says we have X amount of positions. You have budget that's in the course that with and so the promotion still would be in accordance with both the base pay and, and the budget. Is that correct? Yeah, whatever you pay, it doesn't matter what you pay. To, I understand what you're saying, but whatever you pay, you just don't go over the budget. You just don't hide. I understand, but I was just making sure that, that everybody understood that this wouldn't be an increase. You already budgeted that. Yes, that's what, that's what I suggested, that they just, whatever this base pay, if they pass the, the base pay, new base pay ordinance, just make sure you stay within the budget. Okay, this new base pay that, that we're discussing right now, this year's budget, does it reflect this base pay? No. Okay. I use, uh, no. I, well, um, I don't know if I use, I have to look where before. I may have used the Chiefs numbers. I, I'm not. I use my numbers. For the, I'm talking about for the budget. I'm not talking about the base pay. 
I know I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to trying to think. Okay. But I don't think it really it doesn't my consideration was the 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 current base pay and what the the officers were currently making. But that okay. doesn't matter as long as they stay within the budget. As long as you stay within that budgeted amount. It, it that doesn't matter. As long as you don't go with what the salaries say, total salaries, it, it, and it's, it's within whatever base pay you pass. I have no idea of knowing what combination of positions are going to be in, you know, happening throughout the year. I don't know if okay. there's 20 officers or two officers or anything like that. All this is just a projection. And you're right. saying, and the city council is saying, I'm giving you, um, how much is in here? I'm giving you three, what is it? I'm looking, trying to find it. Eight, I'm giving you seven, $956,000 in salaries. So whatever, however you can fit, how many men you can get in there, whatever you want to pay, as long as it doesn't go, which the counselor said, as long as you don't go over 956000 in salaries, I don't care how you do it. As long as you stay within the base pay, as long as you do what the base pay says and you stay within this budget. Okay, does anybody have any other questions based on the discussion that was just had? <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I don't know what happened. My Zoom. Uh, I hope y'all can see me. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can see you. So that, <coughs> my apologies. So that, I don't know what happened. It just clicked off. Right. So, you Mayor, the right? current discussion is that there's a motion in a second uh, to spend the rules placed on the third and final read, reading title only for the for the base pay that includes the 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 police and the fire. And we've been we're actively in discussion on that. Uh, okay. I think it. it I I polled to see whether any other questions. Uh, and if there aren't any questions, you may be ready for the. You may be ready to call the question. Okay. Thanks, Andre. Sorry about that, y'all. No problem. Any other questions, comments? If not, we'll call the question. There's a motion in the second. Is that right? Yes. Motion by St. Columbia, second by Ethelin. Okay, so um, Sandy, uh, City Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Thank Columbia. Thank Columbia. Yes. Thank you. Franklin. Mr. Franklin. He's muted. Ethelie. Yes. Davis. Yes. Yeah, he's muted because he's forward. Yeah, I'm Franklin. Okay. I'll uh, I'll vote yes while we're waiting on Chris. His mic is muted. So that's four that's four out of six. Four, yeah. I mean, that's four out of seven. So that's my job. Try to unmute him. Okay. Somebody right. text Chris and tell him to unmute his button there. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. So now we need a motion to put it on a final to reading. Adopt. To adopt. Adopt for final adoption. Adopt. Okay. So is there I'm a motion? Joe St. Columbia, I so put it on the adopt. I Mr. St. Columbia moves adoption. Uh, yes. is, there, is there a second? Move for adoption. Second. Barely seconds the motion. If no other discussion, uh, call the roll. Before we call the roll, Ms. Turner, Ms. Turner can, you read, can you read the ordinance? I, I don't have it in front of me. Can you read the, the title? Hold on a second. I have it right here. Hi. Well, could you read them with that? Yeah. An ordinance to fix the number and base pay of full-time city employees and elected officials to amending all prior such ordinances and for other purposes. Okay. I yield back. And to that number. The number. Five. 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 I can't even vote. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Don and Andre. So the motion's been made and seconded uh, for final adoption. 
If no other questions, um, call the roll. Anthony? Yes. Ford? Abstain. David? Yes. Franklin? St. Columbia? Yes. Yes. Franklin? He's not even up. Smith? Yes. Four yes, one vacant, at one absent, one abstention. He's trying to get back. Oh, hold on. Let's see, saying something. Oh, Mr. Frank, Mr. Franklin says he did unmute. Okay. Well, the motion passes. If, if Mr. Franklin wants to be counted, we'll let him do that. Uh, but the motion passes, and uh, but thank you very much. Now, the, the onus on, on us, Chief Smith, Chief Watson, to watch this over time and make reports back to you, um, back to you uh, monthly and bi monthly, I hope. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may interject. Yeah, go ahead. I think as a practical thing, uh, Mr. Watson and uh, and Mr. Smith need to get, get the council, because uh, council had to prove uh, – <laughs> Promotions. They 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 need they need to send that through first. So you can go ahead and do the hiring while you while you're doing whatever uh, to to hire the other people. Okay. Well, Chief Smith and Chief Watson and I will get with you, Andre, on that. That's okay. Yeah, I think you need to send it through pretty quickly so you can go ahead and get that part done and move out the way for the other people. Okay. Well, let me say thank you on behalf of both those departments, especially. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to make a difference for the city. And I hope I hope we make the crowd that you voted for it. Um, so thank you very much. See, time is a good. What's the next item on the agenda? I know we needed the cleanup budget, Derek. Did, are we doing that tonight, Derek? Derek, is the cleanup budget on the agenda tonight for audit? I don't see it. It's not. I don't see it on mine. Okay. Okay. Well, if it's not on the agenda, it's not on there. Um, we do need to address that pretty soon, though, because the auditors are – and all it is is fixing a couple of categories, as Derek explained, but we'll go over that next time we get it on the agenda. What's the next thing? Bulldozer. Bulldozer. The competitive bidding waiver, yeah, okay, yeah, ordinance for emergency hire of first responders. Okay, oh, which one? Okay. Is, which one? All right, which one do y'all want to do first? <laughs> well, that's the next one that's in line. That's the well, we've just been line. talking a lot about it, so why don't we do the emergency hiring and we'll do the, the dozer thing? Is the mostly next one on the agenda, okay? Well, that's what we'll do then. Uh, Andre, I'm gonna recognize you. Since you were up all hours of the night working on it, Andre, is Andre here? Andre's muted. Hello. Yeah. Okay, okay. It, it just it just unmuted me. <laughs> I promise I'm not muted. Can you hear me? Hear me? Having a better system, but it keeps muting me. I'm on. Uh, okay. I tried to, based on our conversation last week, I tried to figure out what exactly we need to do on this emergency hiring for uh, police and fire. Uh, I, as we've been talking, I've been editing the ordinance I sent you all, just, just some typos that I would type at 4 o'clock in the morning. But in essence, one of the things about the, the practical issue that we have is in an emergency situation, the hiring process takes too long. Our current, if you look at the order section 3.3, .3, uh, if, if, uh, the personnel manual, it requires that we publish with the paper, with the uh, uh, workforce, with all department heads, and advertise for 10 days. What I was trying to structure in this, and I, I could have done a better job, I admit, to just looking at it, but again, at 4 o'clock this morning, but I uh, was trying to do one initial notice from the mayor's office to the public that we will have a continuing open process for hiring for police and fire so long as it complies with the 
with the uh, base pay and the budget. So that after the mayor does initial notice, uh, you can go from there and uh, weekly he, he, he would advertise as to what position they are. When I say advertise, I mean just simply post a notice and get a paper notice, get department heads notice, get elected officials uh, uh, notice as to it as to the positions that are available. In this ordinance, I also uh, it called for a waiving of the of the advertisement during this period. It has an expiration clause for May 31st. From now, so it could be it could be extended on 30-day increments. Uh, also, address some of the things about promotion and et cetera in, in there. I don't know if you all have had the opportunity to to review it or or look at it, but it's uh, but to uh, address it, I think the major concern is the the timeliness in trying to hire uh, someone. And as a practical thing, a pragmatic thing, in meeting with Alan Alan uh, Martin over the past couple of months and with Purvis Watson, <coughs> once we advertise, typically the only time that the, the, the department head can hire someone is in the is in the time period of advertising. And so we don't keep old uh, we don't keep a pool of applicants. Mr. Ed asked that question earlier. We don't keep a pool of applicants for any position. We only look at those that, that come in during the time period of the advertisement. And so that's the way our policy is currently written. Uh, that's one of the things that Martin uh, was talking to me about revising. But in this ordinance, what you would be doing on a temporary basis is creating a pool for police and fire of applicants. Once they apply, after, the, after you advertise this, past this ordinance, once people apply, they would be in the pool doing this whole emergency protocol and at any point after the initial five-day advertisement, uh, the mayor and department head be meeting weekly as to we had this position available, we want to hire somebody. We had this position available, we want to hire, and they would be able, they'd be authorized to do that without going back doing a blanket advertisement every time. Uh, but they would have to give notice to department heads, city council, uh, workforce, and the paper just hey, we had this position available, we're still accepting advertisement for it, and so. Uh, we're still accepting, but that's generally what my thoughts were. As I said, this, this ordinance, we, you can amend it any kind of way you want to, any conversation questions, because you all gave me no direction. You just gave, you just gave me a broad thought, and I was trying to bring it all into focus. And so with that, I, I yield to anybody to have any comments about it. Well, I like the part where you... Uh said that uh, it can be done in 30-day increments. That would, you know, that would give you some leeway to go ahead and hire somebody, you know. Uh, and Andre and I spoke earlier about it um, this afternoon, kind of late. Not, not, not in time for him to do many changes or anything, but I think the only question I really had was the five day issue. Um, yeah, I, I could amend that wording because what I was intended to say is that when you're doing one advertisement that notices to the public that we're suspending advertisement and that uh, if a five day notice that we'll be accepting applications for civil service position. When I say civil service, I just mean police and fire uh, positions. And from that point on, the mayor would be viewing applications every week. Uh, doing this emergency protocol, and if we have a, a, a vacancy, then the mayor will be authorized to hire without going through the advertising again. You'll be hiring from the pool that you acquired during this time period. Pool applications. Currently, you don't keep a pool of applications. Right. When you advertise for position, you, you look at the list, and 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 the department heads make a decision based on those that they have. And even though those are still kept on file, maybe with the, the chiefs or or with the other department head. When you advertise again, you're looking at the people who advertise do do people who apply during that time period. Yeah. And that's a that's a that's a practical thing that uh, uh it's been done that way for, for 15, 20 years, but it may it's probably a time to us for us to look at changing that. And part of that was the it it was at one point onerous to human resources. The reason behind that, it was onerous to human resources to keep a whole bunch of applications, people applying, 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 no vacancies. Uh but right. Uh, we have to find some kind of way to modernize what we're doing. 
but in in that vein, I, I think you should have a pool of applicants doing this doing this emergency protocol, mm -hmm. so that we won't have to keep going back and doing the advertising. The only other question I had, we talked about already, and I'm not exactly sure if it prohibits this or not, but is the auxiliary issue. If we hired auxiliary policemen, uh, we don't pay them, I think a dollar or something like that, Chief. Um, and they're, they've got pretty stri stringent state requirements for auxiliary policemen, which we st still will have to go by. Um, so it's not still not that easy. Uh, the person has to qualify under different circumstances. I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there. How would that work, anybody, uh, if we wanted to hire four or five auxiliary policemen with this with this particular ordinance? I'm not really sure I know the answer. That's why I'm asking the question. Uh, currently, the ordinance does not address uh, auxiliary, but uh, I could amend it to add auxiliary. Uh, I haven't had a chance. You, you and I did talk today, late this afternoon. I hadn't had a chance since then to research the language for for auxiliary officers, but I, I will gladly do that. With that, I yield to whomever else wants something to say. Those are the only two two issues I had. Five days could be a little long. Depends on, I mean, five days is a long time right now. And it's well, only going to last for the time of the crisis itself. No, no. The I, I think I didn't make myself clear. The initial oh, yeah. after time is five days. Thereafter, you're hiring every week if you got, you have a pool. Uh, okay. I see. You're just giving the public notice that we made this change. Chief Smith, is he still there? I don't see him, uh, but I, I, those were the only two things. But we can continue to research that. Well, he had to go on a call. Okay. Uh, we can continue to research that, though the the uh, auxiliary issue. I guess does anybody else know the answer to that? Uh, okay. Well, I'll open it up for any comments or questions. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to keep my phone from dying here. Uh, I mean, I still I like it better like this than, than not having it at all. So um, I think if so, five days from now. Um, I mean, I, I can live with it. I, I still need some guidance on the auxiliary issue. I, I, I will research that and let you know tomorrow. Okay. So any questions or comments on the issue before the council? I guess this would be ordinance number six. Yes. Okay. So everybody's heard the ordinance. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance number six? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I can barely hear y'all. Okay, go ahead. Uh, is there a motion on adoption of ordinance number six, establishing a higher, or I guess to put it on third and final reading, is that what we have to do? Yes. Yes. Suspend, Suspend the rules, rules placed on third and final. Third final reading. Ordinance number six, establishing a higher protocol for during this uh, national statewide emergency. Is there a motion? I can't hear anybody. We hear you. We hear you, Joe. I can't hear anyone. I have. Um, Mr. Mr. Joe, notwithstanding, is there a motion on this? And we'll get that figured out. <laughs> okay. Hey, Judge. I I can't hear anybody. We, Joe, we, we can hear you. You can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so we can hear you. I make a motion to adopt and put it on final reading. Is that what you're looking for? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. St. Columbia, maybe. Get a second. Do we, I, do we suspend the rules and put ordinance number six? 
regarding the emergency on third and final reading. Is there a second? Is there a second? <laughs> okay, second. not here. Go ahead. Second. I didn't hear he seconded. Melissa Edley. Don, Mr. Edley seconds the motion. Um, okay, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Davis? Yes. St. Columbia? Yes, if you can hear me. Got it. Franklin? Yes. Etherman? Yes. Ford? Yes. Five, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to read the title. The, this is an ordinance establishing a higher protocol for city health and West Island during the, the times of the national or statewide emergency, temporary suspending and waiving certain advertising requirements for potential employees of fire department and police department of the city of Helena, West Island, Arkansas. Is there a motion to adopt? Um, Mr. Ailey, move. I so move to adopt. Uh, can you second, Mr. S Joe? We have a motion. Can you second? Awesome. All right, Mr. Joe seconds the motion. Um, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Atherley. Yes. Ford. Yes. Davis. Yes. Franklin. Yes. St. Columbia. Yes. Thank you. As an emergency clause. So we'll now we. <clears throat> I think that was Mr. Edley moved to adopt the emergency clause on ordinance number six. Is there a second? Second. I think that was Chris second. Chris Frank second. The motion. Is there any discussion on the emergency clause? Which I guess <laughs> without it, the whole the whole thing is probably a new I point. I can't here. hear. Uh, here. Let's say so. Call. Did we have a motion in a second? Yes. Okay. Let's call the roll. Franklin. Yes. Davis. Yes. Ford. Yes. Frank Columbia. Yes. Etherley. Yes. Five yes. All right. Thank you very much. And um, hey, listen, listen, listen. So I've been pressing the unmute button all this time, and now you all can hear me. I mean, because I, I I was on the on the text text, you I, I hadn't voted for anything. When I press the button, and then when I press the unmute myself, then I go, somebody mute me right back. So I'm telling you, what's going on? Nobody wants to hear from me tonight, I see. Um, well, and, and, I, and I, think, I don't think there'd be any objection if you want to be recorded because we're using this technology and it's complicated and, and, and difficult, it can be uh, certainly new. If you want to be recorded <laughs> on the boats that we – that we had tonight. Um, I don't. Is there any objection to allowing? No, no, no. I had first? I had questions. I had a whole bunch of questions, and I was I was texting in the group to to say my questions, and I never got an answer. And then your call dropped. I've been sitting here. I mean, I got on my uh, my uh, laptop and I'm back on. I, I, I got my phone sitting here, so I'm like, well, why can't I get unmuted? So I went to the. I raised my hand. You can raise your hand to speak. Did you all know that? Yeah, I didn't. I yeah, I've raised my hand a bunch of times, but, but yeah. So I know I, I know how to use the technology. I just had a couple of questions to ask. You know, I was asking about the overtime on the police department. Where are we with the overtime? And I, I was going to ask you uh, about the uh, the police the police officers. You know, you know, out in Walmart, have we have we signed have we got into an agreement with Walmart that Walmart used the police department? A lot of things I've been trying to ask because I want to I, you know, want to know some get some answers. All right. Well, let me. Uh, uh, what what else do we have on the agenda? The two ordinances waiving bidding on the dozer. Okay. Miss um, Franklin, that's that's a separate issue. We can bring it up at the end of the agenda. Is that okay with you? Yeah. If I don't get on beauty, they're blocked out. <laughs> I didn't see you raising your hand, but that might seem different. Um, okay, so the next thing is the dozer issue. Is that right? I That's correct. The, yeah. All right, there, so are, there are two separate uh, ordinances relating to the do dozers. 
You, uh, Andre, you want to go ahead and complete that? Yeah, there were two separate, uh, I would say two separate, uh, two separate uh, 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 purchase orders, uh, potential purchase order relating to the purchase of some dozers, both from a caterpillar. One of them is a caterpillar D6 and one is a caterpillar D6 uh, T. I emailed you all the the, uh, the ordinances waiving competitive building. Uh, you all had discussion with the mayor last week about uh, the the uh, the need for them uh, as it relates to it. Uh, one is financed for 60 months and one is financed for 72 months. I don't know which one you all want to do first or discuss first. Uh, one payment is just a little over 6000 One payment is a little over 4000 uh, one is one the value the, the longer loan uh, is a little over six thousand seventy two months and a little, uh, approximately three hundred uh, over three hundred thousand dollars. The other one's in the two hundred thousand dollar range. Uh, I'm trying to look up an email to pull it up, but you all have them before you all. Uh, I don't know which one you all address first. Well, I, I think. Uh, last last week, y'all authorized the purchase of it. That this, these were on state bid contract and in compliance with audit. And we also actually did get an estimates from Southern Power, I believe it was. Um, and this was more competitive. Um, and we had we had this discussion last week, and I don't want to repeat it, but I'll be glad to answer any questions. Uh, in the, in the ordinance. Uh, uh, let's do let's do the smaller one first. In, in the ordinance, it shows uh, the one relating to a D six T dozer. Uh, paragraph C shows that the amount of purchase, the amount of finance is four thousand one hundred sixty four dollars and ninety four cent. The total amount of finance is two hundred twenty nine dollars, two hundred twenty nine thousand seven hundred ninety four dollars, and it's financed for sixty months. Uh, in that, it has a typo on line D because it says. Three hundred thirty-nine thousand. That's on the other contract, but the total amount of expenditure for this one would be two hundred twenty-nine thousand seven hundred ninety-four dollars. I would amend paragraph D on that ordinance. That's a typo. Okay. Is there a motion? Is this uh, ordinance number seven? Number seven. So is there a motion, a, a motion to suspend the rules and put ordinance number seven on third and final reading? We've already actually done this. This is just the competitive bidding part of the the part of this right andre you all talked about it last week and you all told me to bring both of these back this week last week you actually adopt well, you, 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 we, you have, all, we have proved to go ahead move to go ahead because of the timing issue we proved to go ahead with the purchases but this is dealing with the competitive bidding part of it right um, so i just want to make sure that's clear so Anyway, is first of all, are there any questions about ordinance number seven? Let's do it that way. If no questions, is there a motion to adopt ordinance number seven and put it on, I'm sorry, to put it on third and final reading? Wow. Uh, so, so move to adopt ordinance number seven by placing it on its third and final reading, reading title only. Thank you, Mr. Adderley. Is there a second? Second, I, I, I've been steady talking. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Franklin seconds the motion to put ordinance number seven on third and final reading. Call the roll. Ford? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Franklin? Yes. At Columbia? Davis? Yes. At Columbia? I'm sure he's saying yes. <laughs> he's not on. You can five put yes. you can you got five yeses. Okay, yes. motion passes. So and now the question is on final adoption of ordinance number seven, 2020. Is there a motion? Um, so moved. first, I, I will I will read it. It's ordinance waiving competitive bid in accordance with Arkansas Code Annotated 1458303, authorizing rent into a contract to purchase certain property for the city of Illinois for other related purposes. I think Mr. Franklin moved to adopt. Is there's Mr. Franklin moves? I think this is game for this. Is there a is there a second? Second. Mr. Adley seconds the motion. Call the roll. Davis. 
Thank Columbia. Franklin. Etherly. Yes. Ford. Yes. Franklin. St. Columbia. Davis. Smith. Yes. You can hear that thing. I don't know if she was. I have four. I have three yes. He, he, he text message, yes. Who? Chris. Okay, that's four yes. Okay. So the motion passes. Do we need a, a motion for adoption of the emergency clause? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion on the emergency clause in ordinance number seven? So moved. Mr. Etherly moves. Is there a second? Anybody second the motion on the emergency clause for uh, ordinance number seven? <laughs> I heard somebody yeah. say something. <laughs> Was Franklin saying yes? Okay. Yeah. I think they're playing some games with this thing. Okay, call roll. Ford? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Franklin? Sure, he's saying yes. St. Columbia? Davis? Smith? Oh, Monica says yes. That's four yes. Okay. So, Andre, you want to go to ordinance number eight? Yeah, no. Ordinance number eight is, is, is the same uh, structure, except for it's, it's a larger purchase, uh, $399,000, 72 months finance, $6,000 uh, in payments. Uh, if you look at, at paragraph C and D, that shows us $6,114.68 payments, 72 months, total amount $399,000. $331.49. And before we go any further, I do want to compliment uh, Andre because he, he's done a lot of heavy lifting tonight, had a lot of ordinances to write. And um, we've only had a week since since the last meeting, so he didn't have as much time as he usually has. So, uh, Andre, I want you to know we appreciate all your staying up late. And like I said, I know he was staying up late because he was texting us questions at 1130 last night. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, man. So this is the same thing on the other dozer. Uh, is there a motion to yes. put resolution number? Oh, this is I'm looking at the wrong thing. Ordinance number eight on third and final reading. Is there a motion? So move. That sounded like Chris Franklin. <laughs> adoption. I mean, put it on third and final reading. Ordinance number eight. Is there a second? Anybody want to second that motion? I get I'm getting a lot of text, but I don't really have time to look at all of them. Is there a second to the motion for to put ordinance number eight on third and final reading? I mean a second. Okay, Miss Ford seconds the motion. Uh, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Etherly? Yes. Ford? Yes. Davis? Yes. Franklin? Okay. St. Columbia? Yes, if you can hear me. Thank you. That's five. Okay, motion passes. So the next question before the council is to put resolution, I mean, or I'm sorry, I'm looking at something different. Uh, ordinance number eight on uh, final adoption. Is there a motion? Thank you, Columbia. So Mr. St. Columbia moves that we uh, place uh, or ordinance number eight on uh, final uh, adoption. Is there a second? Second. I think that was Don. Second motion. Yes. Um, okay, Madam Clerk, call the roll. St. Columbia. Yes. Franklin. Davis. Ford. Yes. Etherly. Yes. yes. 
Okay. Got a four. Yes. Thank you. Four yes. Okay, motion passes. Thank y'all. And I, now I've got that the uh, Derek. Uh, this is your call, but I've got on the agenda. I'm told the the budget cleanup resolution is on the agenda. Yeah, I just want to <clears throat> mention to the council again that all I'm simply trying to do is just reappropriate funds from accounts that were um, under that the expenditures were over were under the appropriations and move those to accounts that were uh, expenditures that went over appropriations. I'm not. Uh, all I want to do is. Uh, reappropriate the budget of funds. Uh, it's not my intention or the mayor's intention to uh, get the council to retroactively uh, approve any contracts or retroactively approve anything uh, over the mayor's spending limit. I don't think there's anything in the resolution that would, uh, any language in there that would suggest that. And so that's all I was trying to do. Um, in, in, in particular, uh, I wanted to address the Municipal League dues that uh, are due before the, the the year. So the 2020 dues for the legal aid was, were due in December of 2019. And like the previous year, they, the 2018, the 2019 dues were due in 2018. So we paid the 2018 dues late. So we had the 2018 dues that we actually paid in 2019 and we paid the 2020 dues on time. And so what we did, we had a double payment. And so that, that budget item was gonna be over in 2019. And so I really want to just move, reappropriate some funds to cover that. And uh, also to cover the landfill expenses that we paid because of uh, St. Francis County and City for a City not bringing their waste here and the expenses that the general fund had to cover for the landfill. So those are the two things in particular that I wanted. But uh, overall, I kind of still, if, if you can do that or just change the uh, appropriations just to uh, cover any expenditures that went over appropriations. And like I said, we're not trying to uh, retroactively appro uh, approve any uh, contracts that you guys don't know about or try to retroactively approve anything that the mayor may have gone over his $5,000 spending limit without you guys knowing. And so that's the basis of the resolution. So I actually consider if you, you know, if you don't want to do it now, that's fine. But, you know, if you don't do it now, I, I just ask again the next council meeting. Uh, but like I said, I just want you guys, you know, to, to consider it. I think he's falling off. Well, it seems like the mayor's falling off, so, you know, it's, I don't know who, you know, if you just want to wait. I mean, you, you like I said, just consider it. I think the mayor has left, so uh, but that's all I was asking for. <laughs> But if not, that, yeah. that's the last item on the agenda anyway. So yeah. if you guys don't want to do anything, I guess you can move to Joe can take the floor. <laughs> I move we're adjourned then. Second. Everybody's muted, it looks like. Okay. Second. <laughs> Second. Okay. Okay. Second. All right. All right. In the words of Bowser, good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Boo, do, boo, boo. My father got home. All right. All right, yeah, have a good one. All right. Bye. Bye.